for Christmas. So back to our top story this evening, as the president has now quietly extended the deadline one more time for Obamacare. You've got an extra day now, uh, giving everybody until Christmas Eve to complete their enrollments. What would you rather do on December 24th, right? The White House is reporting more than one million have signed up between the federal and state exchanges since October 1st, but that is well below the seven million that they're shooting for by March. When asked about a plan B, if Obamacare starts to unravel, some believe it already has, White House Council of Economic Advisors Chairman Jason Furman had this to say. Does the administration have any kind of back, backup plan? And this may not, this may be beyond your purview. If not enough young, healthy people sign up for the Affordable Care Act, what's going to happen? There's a plan A, which is to enroll as many uh, young, healthy people as you possibly can. Hmm. There's a uh, plan A is what he had to say. Charles Krauthammer is Fox News contributor, of course, and the author of Things That Matter, which is number one on the New York Times bestseller list and has been for the last six weeks. Charles, good evening. Good to have you here. Pleasure to be with you. So uh, apparently, at least according to this administration official, there really is not a plan B, Charles. There is a plan B and they won't say what it is, but it's obvious that is a bailout. You heard the question, what happens if there aren't enough young people who join the exchanges so their overpayments can subsidize the older and the sicker? And the answer is, if this were a true free market, if the insurance companies were on their own, they would go bust mm -hmm. because then their expenses would be huge and their income from the premium would be small. But the administration understands, and there's actually a provision in the bill all 2,000 pages of it, which is obscure and no one's talked about. It goes by the name of Risk Corridor, where built into the bill is the ability of the government to bail out the insurers and to fix the balance sheet. Yeah. The reason that in normal commerce, this is called the death spiral for insurers, is if you're paying out a huge amount in uh, benefits and you're getting only a small amount in premiums, then the only way out of that is to raise your premiums even more. But that would mean even fewer young people joining. And that would mean that you go way down into the, the death spiral where you become insolvent. The government plan is, that is a plan B, but they won't say it, a bailout. Yeah. That uh, provision that you talked about, it, it was baked into the bill really in, in a deal. It was like a backroom deal between the insurance companies and, and the administration because the insurance companies saw the writing on the wall. They, they knew that it was going to be next to impossible to cover all of the insured in their, under their normal business model. Uh, so they baked that into the cake and said, well, you're going to you're gonna have to help us out if this is going to you know, make us go broke as companies. Is it looking, Charles, though, that the problem is, so, is, is bigger than they ever dreamed and, and that they may not even be the bailout might not be quite enough. You might need to go to a, a you know, real government-engineered program. Well, that turns it into a government-engineered program. Remember, the people who go into the exchanges are going to two places, either into Medicaid, an overwhelming number are going into Medicaid, and that is entirely paid for by the tax money that we give to the federal government. So that's one aspect of the government funding entirely this kind of health care. The other people are going to go into the exchanges, presumably, to get private insurance and private coverage. But again, if it's so, if what they call the, uh, the adverse selection happens, too many young, not a lot, not enough old people, yeah. so the insurers are losing money, there's only one way out. The government itself would again. So what you'd end up with, Martha, is a system where the federal government, your tax dollars, are paying for just about everybody in the exchange one way or the other. And the insurers, as we just saw today, and we saw last week, are ordered around, uh, you know, like uh, servants by the federal government, extend the, the, the deadline, allow people who had their policies canceled to not have to pay a fine, suspend the individual mandate. All of these things are happening that show that the insurance have lost their independence and are counting on the government to bail them out. Yeah. And you wonder, uh, you know, w what the people do, you know, I mean, do, do they the say at that do? point, you know, I'm, we're just lemmings, we're going to go along with it, we're not going to have our doctor, we're not going to have our plan, we're not going to have anything the way we liked it anymore, uh, and if this is the best you've got for us, then that's what we'll do. Well, I think what the people ought to do is to pressure people in the Congress, particularly the representatives in the House House of Representatives, 
to, to present a bill right now that says there will be no government bailout mm -hmm. of the insurance companies if, as might happen, as is likely to happen, they are going to become insolvent as a result of being forced into Obamacare. And I think this is a real opportunity for the GOP. As the debt ceiling approaches, this might be the one thing you demand in return. You would have broad popular support. Nobody wants a, a bailout of another set of big companies. And I think Americans would resist having to pay in taxes for the mistakes of this administration. I think it ought to be presented as an alternative. And I, I think we would get wide support. Charles, thank you so much. Good to see you tonight. Pleasure. Thank you very much.